and so welcome to How to Yu Gi Oh! Let's Explain Triple Tactics series. So, in this video, I'm gonna talk about triple tactics and my feelings uh, on this card and why my hot take personally, why I don't agree with these series of cards and why I just don't play them. Okay, with that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay. And let's talk about our first card that you see right in front of you, Triple Tactics Talent. So let's read that effect. If your opponent has activated a mastery effect during your main phase this turn, activate one of these effects. One, draw two cards. Two, take control of one master opponent controls until the end phase. Three, look at your opponent's hand and choose one card from it to shuffle into the deck. You can only activate one triple tactics talent per turn. So when we first look at this card, and you, as you can see there on the screen, you can see that triple tactics talent is made of these three, uh, these uh, two banned cards. Change of Heart has come off the ban list uh, a few a few lists ago. But anyways, leaving that aside, we can see here that this card needs uh, your opponent. Now, obviously, this card is classed as a board breaker. But we do have had board breakers before, for example, like Dark Road of Moor. Dark Road of Moor, for example, is a board break I like to call that is active, whereas Triple Tactics Talent is reactive. Now, we have seen, obviously, throughout board breakers that have been released, like active board breakers are better than reactive board breakers. Allow me to explain this. Um, when you have active board breakers like Dark Rune or more, Lightning Storm, Raigeki, Dark Hole, Evenly Match, such other things of the like. Because they're active, you can activate, yes, you can't respond, obviously, to your opponent, but they have the benefit of you activate them immediately and there's no stipulations on how you activate these cards. Now, the problem with the Triple Tactics uh, talent or the Triple Tactics series is that they're reactive. So we need to wait for our opponent to do something and then activate them. Now, this would be fine if this card was a quick play, for example, then being a quick play and if it was reactive, that would be totally fine. But the problem is that this is a normal spell. This downgrades its power significantly a bit. While yes, um, and also as well, you can only use this card in the main phase, meaning that its power again is hampered quite a bit and another thing I need to mention is that usually 90% of the time it's usually better to play the the banned cards in your deck than playing triple tactics itself for example if you could get away with playing three change of hearts in your deck or a confiscation or a similar sort of card like confiscation I'll get to that in uh, the rest of this video then it's usually better that way we have seen with this card, in fact, that this card has promoted the usage of a point of the Red Lotus. Simply because of the effect, simply because we had confiscation ban, people have been using in the competitive scene, who used confiscation, people realized that we had a card called a point of the Red Lotus that was the trap version of confiscation. And guess what happened to that? It got limited. Yeah, that's how that works. Okay, carrying over from our dis my discussion about Triple Tactics Talent, we have one of the cards. One of the banned cards that it images, that it derives from, is part of Greed, allowing you to draw two cards. We do have a playable version of this, which is Sky Striker Mobilizing Gate. And I would honestly say Sky Striker Mobilizing Gate is better than Pot of Greed. Um, it's currently at one. I wonder why, but before it used to be banned, it's currently at one. Will it in TCG go up to two? Who knows? But in my opinion, if you want Pot of Greed and you really want then just play Strike Strike or Mobilizing Gate. You don't need to play Talent if you're looking for that effect. Uh, Strike Strike or Mobilizing Gate practically fills out that purpose. Yes, you need three spells in your graveyard to get that extra draw, but you know what? Hey, who cares what matters? You've got loads of searching, you've got loads of power here. Mobilizing Gate beats for itself. So there we go. Let's go to the next slide. We have Change of Heart. Another uh, card but a uh, card that is now legal mind you that is on talents making talents even weaker than it was before when it was banned talents would be justified 
But even if Palin's uh, change of heart was banned, it still would not be justified for you to play a uh, challenge. Um, you have enemy controller, Sky Striker, Mecha Widow Anchor, and Mind Control. Again, when Mind Control was at 3 back in them days, in the recent history, Mind Control was absolutely crazy and got limited to 1 and it was just absolutely bonkers, right? We have cards that do what Change of Heart does and we have so many copies of them and we don't, and they don't rely on your opponent. So why are we, why play talents? Again, it seems like a lot of busy work for just doing this. You could use Sky Striker Widow Anchor to basically do the same thing as talents would do and it's free. You don't need to rely on your opponent at all. Um, same thing with mind control, same thing with enemy control, right? These cards are basically free, they don't need your opponent's intervention, they don't need you to ask permission, like a child, to activate an effect, right? Facts. No, you just take it, right? You just take it. When you activate these cards like a man, you just activate it, you just take the card, you just take it. No questions asked. Perfect in every way. Alrighty, and we have the final card that we can see on this, uh, on Triple Tactics Talent, which is Confiscation. Another banned card, but as I've said earlier in this video, uh, because of because of people's usage of uh, talents, people realized the effect of Confiscation on talents was pretty good. So they then started in the competitive scene, especially in TCG, started to find if we can have, if there's a card similar to Confiscation, that is legal, and that was a point of the Red Lotus. Guess what happened to a point of the Red Lotus? You guessed it, it, it went to one, and Talents has stopped seeing play since. Like, Talents is just not good. So, overall, let's now, um, we've hit the issues with Talents. It relies on your opponent, and the cards that, bad cards that it does um, have with it, tend to have either replacements, there are legal versions of those cards that you can play, and those cards have, have proven results time and time again, and we've seen them get limited on the list, get brought back on the list, and they are proven damage. Whereas, talents, I don't see it doing anything. In my opinion, when it comes to board breakers, board breakers are better when they're active, rather than being reactive. And uh, Triple Tactic Talent is a reactive board breaker. Those, those are not the best board breakers in Yu-Gi-Oh! We are, uh, we are you know, starting to see that active board breakers are better than reactive board breakers. And let us remember that reactive board breakers, right, rely on the opponent. So they can only activate by relying on the opponent's um, effects. Whereas active board breakers don't rely on your opponent at all. Um, cards like Dark Rune No More, Lightning Storm, you know, evenly matched, don't rely on your opponent activating an effect for them to activate the effect as an activation condition. And so we're definitely going to see that this card is going to fall out of favor. And it's my opinion that, in my honest hot take opinion, that Triple Tactics Talents is not a good card. And you are better off playing these other cards mentioned than playing talents itself. Let's move on. Okay, and so let's talk about the uh, another series of Triple Tactics card that's come out just this year in Photon Hypernova, which is Triple Tactics Thrust. I mentioned this card in the greater set video, core set video, but let's, let's now talk about it and analyze it a little bit deeper. Let's go, let's read its effect. If your opponent has activated most effect during this turn, Set one or more spell slash trap directly from your deck, except triple tactics thrust. Or if your opponent controls a monster, you can add it to your hand instead. That set card cannot be activated this turn. You can only activate one triple tactics thrust per turn. Now, when you first look at this card, you immediately, you immediately get very, very excited. And you're like, oh my god, I can activate any double I can add any double spell or trap on my deck. Ah, you start wanking yourself, but you need to roll down, slow your horses, calm down, and realize it relies on your opponent. And here we have a serious problem here. I cannot begin to state how this is very, very easy to play around. Another thing as well that this card also uh, fails to mention is because it has that, because it adds a card, 
This card is affected by Ash Blossom as well. So is Talents. To protect this talent is also affected by Ash Blossom. But this is especially going to be really, really uh, damning here. Is that like uh, it's going to affect if uh, Ash is hit on this card? Well, tough luck, right? Now, this is also a card that is very easy to gauge and very easy to know when you, if you're playing against this card, if you know someone's playing this card, then you simply just Ash becomes popular in the format as you just activate Ash, and you know, triple tactics is just you just wait for your Ash to bait this card, right? Yeah, uh, the only deck I, we can see at the moment that can use this card with relative ease is Branded. But leaving Branded aside and leaving the specifics aside, uh, Thrust, again, is, is a card which I don't like. For the simple reason it has the triple tactics, uh, we can say, weakness of it relies on your opponent. But it also has another weakness that we don't talk that we're, no one's talking about, is that it's it's trying to reinvent the wheel here, right? The effect of tel uh, thrust is very very powerful. However, if you're adding a normal spell or trap from your deck, it's usually part of your archetype piece or combo piece in your deck. If you've constructed your deck well enough, right? Usually, modern decks in Yu-Gi-Oh now are very very consistent. This is not in the day. This is not back in the day of. Uh, XYZ format or sequel format where deck where consistency was pretty pretty bogus. We're having uh, ha field spells like Pararaino or Primeval Planet that are absolutely insane in terms of adding consistency to your deck and just, and just being basically win cards. The consistency of archetypes now in Yugi's environment now are extremely good in archetypes and this card is fighting for space for actual good cards in your deck. Now, yes, you could use this to add the out. You know, fun times, the meme, let's add the out to out the board. But let's be realistic, you're much better off putting the actual out in your deck to break those boards than searching the out itself, right? So at best, this card is going to have you do loads of math for your deck and basically complicate a simple deck building uh, session and make it more complicated than it needs to be. And any card that is making things complicated for you for no apparent reason, in my eyes, deserves the boot, deserves to be thrown in the bin. Now, and yeah, let's look at this format really. This card on paper, right, should be able to should be able for you to be having no uh, no problems dealing with Cash Terra. But now let's look at Cash Terra and let's talk about it. Cash Terra has a weakness to a card, to, uh, to several cards. A uh, majority of that are quick plays. Oh, would you look at that? This card doesn't search quick plays. Oh no. How did we ever foresee that? Yeah, already right up the starting gate, we have a serious problem here as it doesn't search the quick plays that you need against the cash matchup. You, you lonely bin. Anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much it. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.